Thank you, thank you, everyone. I am Astro Johnson. I am not on camera at the moment because I don't know how to do things in order. Where am I? Let's go fly. Ladies and gentlemen, people and persons, beings of all ages, welcome to Astalu. Tonight is our first ever sword fight tournament. Oh yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Will someone aim that camera at me? <laughs> sword fight is a clash of words. Fighters are encouraged to draw from the multitudes of written art and portray characters in a persistent storyline competition. Call it ultimate writing or mixed literary arts. Tonight we have five rounds of eight fighters vying for the three pounds of wood. The Writing Knights Sword Fight Championship Pencil. And the top four combatants also win some money. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. yeah. But not only that, but you in the audience will also have an opportunity to take home some cash as provided by Makeshift Makerspace. Uh, second Friday readings. Three times tonight in increments of $50, $35, and $15. Everyone who paid admission, every fighter, and every judge will have at least one ticket. And you may buy additional tickets for $5 each. Please see myself or Skylar to purchase more tickets. <laughs> I will again point out our lovely photographer, Jamie Lynn. Taking the amazing photos that will end up on writingnights.com and probably our Instagram and all those other things. Um, we are also live streaming the event, so go on the Writing Nights page and share that shit because we want people to know what's happening. Say hello to everyone who is watching. Hello, hello. 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 And then people watching at home can drop a five dollars to Writing Nights. Uh, there is a link in the description, and for YouTubers, it, there will also be a link there. Um, all this money raised will go towards the writing nights to make us even more of a global phenomenon. Writing <laughs> 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 nights worldwide! So, let's introduce, introduce our judges. Casey Christofik is the author of the book Give Life Back to Me from Writing Nights Press last year. He is a certified ballroom dance instructor at Inspiration to Movement, Inc. in Columbus, Ohio. Casey's right back there, give him a laugh. <laughs> Our next judge, father of one half of super team, poetry, music, musician, poet, writer, slash author, host. The music can be found at alieniplaya.com and books at sdjbooks.com. Alien I Playa. of the super team, mother, poet, photographer, model, actress, host, and the only unicorn you will ever meet. The unicorn. <laughs> our next judge, writer and friend of Writing Nights Press, currently has a book in our submission process. Fingers crossed for her, Cat Russell. <laughs> The beautiful, talented, and voted most likely to see the, succeed in my family, my niece, Dora. <laughs> so, for people who are unaware, tonight's bouts will be head-to-head -head with judges voting for the fighter they think is better. Example, if fighter A gets three votes of five, fighter A gets three points added to their tally. People at home, or people at home can't see this, but there is a, a list there where I will write down the numbers next to it. Uh, fighter B will then get two points. Um, the top four scorers will move on to the fourth and fifth rounds. Um, 
I, I guess I'm saying that out loud. I did read this before, I promise. Um, that might be it. All right, let's start round one. here. Um, I'm going to let Philip do his thing. actually like lip sync or well, yeah. not lip sync yeah. but provide the volume maybe, maybe. Yeah. yeah mine sucks <laughs> doesn't suck it's just quiet In this corner, a human of regular abilities who bores most people into wishing the rabid lizard baby from the 80s miniseries V would dump its lizard doo-doo diaper into their mouths as a distraction, <laughs> Greg Milo. <laughs> In this corner, a loner, a geek, and a dreamer that is lost in another world, rejecting your reality, the white dragon, Philip Patterson. All right. Does anyone have a coin? I always forget the coin. And lint. Lint and coin. <laughs> As with Greg thought I'm covered. Cool. I'm not going to give you all. <laughs> I thought you wanted one. <laughs> all right. This is start of round one. That means there is one minute in the round as soon as I figure out how to change it. Who's first? Who's Um. Let's make Philip purple. Philip is purple. He is not purple, but he's purple. <laughs> Can you see this? Yeah, I got purple somewhere. Yeah. All right, cool. All right. So, since Philip is purple, heads or tails? Heads. All right. Is that? Okay, that's a tail. All right. So, Greg, do you want to go first or second? Oh, I'll go first. All right. Well, I'm going to count down. Oh. From five to one, and then I'm pointing you and begin the chapter. Okay. So, step back like a foot. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on no, it's all right. It's all right. Yeah, it's you're, perfect. you're in perfect. the frame right now. There. Yep. How do I look? <laughs> like a gorgeous. Freshly showered. Yes. That's funny because I didn't take a shower yet. <laughs> That's okay. We saw you take it. You mean this isn't real? <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, go. Ever wonder who was the first human to drink cow milk? 
That stream of secretion squeezed, free from the swollen teeth, the epitome of enticement, succulence to the last drop. Cow milk created the milkman, and the milkmaid, and the milk carton, and milk chocolate, and milk of magnesia. Cookies and milk, the greatest kid combo, gobbled yearly by the yuletide head honcho, those addictive chasmorphins, opioid imposter, fatty food promoter, tug and yank the cow repeatedly, impregnate the cow perpetually, cage the cow with cruelty. Delicious, magnificent milk, pasteurized prize, industrial gold mine, dairy lobbying lactators, bodacious bovine beauty. Human milk, disgusting. <laughs> Cow milk is where it's at. Goat milk, maybe. Chimpanzee milk, you crazy. Camel milk, I'll pass. Monkey milk, you mad. Caproach milk, yeah. Cap Time. Milk. Oh, I forgot to warn you. I will do a knock at 10 seconds. Oh, there we go. Gotcha. I forgot. I... Philip knows what. <laughs> I'm not going to complain. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Philip. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Welcome to the dungeon. Welcome to the end. It's the boss, the final chapter. Are you ready? Begin. Will you win? Will you fight? Will you run? What will you do? It all depends on your skills, your wisdom, as you learn. <laughs> as your health is low, as the final blow. Is Unstoppable as you run out of time, as you run out of ideas, as you run out of ways. A loophole, a hope, a shot to win. To overcome, to be the hero, yet it all ends the same way, a game over. Are you ready? Start. As the game starts, as the choices may are made, will you win, will you lose, will you start over? Will you give up? Will you fight? Will you run? As each step can teach, as each game over changes. All can be crossed. What will you do? What will you make your choice of? Have a good day. All right. Thank you. Just, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, judges, on three. Hold up. Either. Pink for Philip, or purple, white for Greg. Purple purple, 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 purple for Philip, or white for Greg. All right, three, two, one, vote. All right, we have five points for Greg. Give Greg a round of applause. Woo!
in this corner. A competitor who never planned to be here, at least not at first. People kept backing out. She kept filling in. And lo and behold, she has magic. Please welcome Skylar Cruz. <laughs> And in this corner, she is the Wicked Witch of Wordcraft, the Literary Khaleesi of Canton, Ohio, and your feminist hero, Daria Quinn! Would you like to do first or second? I'll go first. First. All right. I will count down from one, two, five, two, go. Good, are we good with the camera? Um, yes, perfect. Sure. All right. <laughs> All right. I am. Right. But my mom is 4'11", so I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> hey, I'm 4'11", watch it. <laughs> All right. Five, four, three, two, one, go. You said, Jesus fucking Christ, but must you? I'm not saying you have to have the same respect I do for the person called Jesus Christ, but do you know any other swearing names to use? Vary it up a little. Try out Muhammad or Buddha. Shout, Hare Krishna, when you scrape your knee. Let's be fair and give all major religions a shot in obscenity. Turn heads when you declare, we're all the fucking sun god! Or, oh, Zeus! When it feels like the world is on top of you, oh, Cyrus! Blame the idiocy you see around you on Thor or the Japanese emperor. Next time you rant about your mother, flavor it with, oh, my ancestors! Or, son of a witch doctor! We are global society. Pull your cursing from all faiths. <laughs> Ready, Daria? There you are. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Hi, I'm the president of Chick fil A. And every time we buy one of our delicious chicken sandwiches, you're helping us to fund religiously based conversion therapy camps where we literally torture the game right out of your children. Isn't that right, Cindy? They made me drink turpentine for three days in order to wash the taste of pussy out of my mouth. <laughs> now, with the help of Jesus and Chick-fil-A, the very thought of casual sex with anyone other than my future husband raises suicidal triggers, which often lead me to seeking out psychological help. That is, when I'm not, when I'm not actively trying to kill myself. We'd say that these results are typical, but <laughs> then we'd be lying. But hey, rather dead than gay, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, judges, get your thoughts in order. Remember, purple for Skylark, white for Daria. Three, two, one, go! Two purple, three white. Round of applause for both. Woo!
I speak, therefore I am a vessel of sound. He asked to the In this corner, trickling down, he is a vessel of sound, the natural element, black rain. <laughs> and in this corner, weighing in at 1,522 pounds, and not at all happy that you keep trying to kill her, the angry cow. <laughs> Popularity comes. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, <laughs> these are really purple. purple. So, <laughs> you can black the same if you want. You can keep the same side of the stage purple the whole. I don't. It doesn't matter. Okay. okay. <laughs> Switch it up. Keep people awake. Right. I'm just trying to make sure they're confused. You do whatever you want. You <laughs> All right. Black rain. Black rain is purple. Angry cow is white. All right. Wait. No, you're right. You're purple, you're white. <laughs> one more time, one more time. Alright. Angry cow is purple. Black rain is white. Because reasons. Alright. Alright, black rain, heads or tails? Heads. Alright. It is heads. Do you want to go first or second? Alrighty. Take it rain. Five. Four, three, two, one, go! Lonesome Dove. Last night, I walked a hundred miles alone, sang a thousand songs, some of joy, some of pain, about the sunny days, those filled with rain. I whistled like the birds in the trees, remembering all the midnight rendezvous and sweet love stories. How my nights are lonely and cold, for it's you that I'm longing to hold. I sung about the changing of season, how love has no rhyme nor reason, how our love was once young and all the precious things that you have done, ballads of the first time that we made love, praising the heavens up above, all the tender nights you cried of the foolish games I played and told so many lies, Begging for forgiveness and how I'll never do again, for you are my lover, my, Hi. Friend, my friend. We'll let that go. We'll let that go. Just remember, supposed to top. Any, we're gonna let the first one go, but when it hits zero, you have to stop. Otherwise, it's gone. Yes, sir. All right. You're right. <laughs> uh, so you can go like just zero if you need to go over. If you need to go over, Mr. Cow, Mrs. Cow, the Mad Cow, Madam Cow. <laughs> All right, five, four, three, two, one, go. Corpse chompers, flesh munchers, and partakers of carcass cuisine will not hesitate to proudly proclaim, without a hint of irony, their love for the animals upon which they dine. My brain is spinning in circles. I'm confused. No matter how long my eyes stare at the words that form the entry inside Miriam Webster, I fail to see the inclusion of wishing someone dead. I love and eat grandma is surprisingly not an included sample sentence. I expedition. Love, noun, one syllable. 
an intense feeling of deep affection that is easily overlooked when your stomach begins to growl, as in, oh my sweet, adorable poodle, I had such love for you until I got hungry and heated the barbecue. Thank you. Substantial sustenance 
intimate intellectual intercourse and restoring, reanimating the shriveled shell of self I used to be, regaining me. Aww. All right, judges, remember that Finn is purple and Azrael is white. So in three, two, one, vote. All right, so we have three for purple and two for white. Don't mind me switching things around. Talk about yourself. All of Facebook is seeing your butt. Unknown. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> Unknown. <laughs> That's worth the price of admission right there. <laughs> And that is, of course, if you know people are still watching. Well, <laughs> you probably just see your big old ass and be like, nah. Um, Daria and Michael are still watching. <laughs> <laughs> Even though, you know, they're here, too. <laughs> I appreciate you meeting you all. Why watching when you're here? So that other people will see that you're watching. How do we do the first round? The second round is two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes? As in two minutes to midnight. Two oh, minutes to midnight. Sit. All right. If you're a wonderful friend, First up to the stage, Skylar Bruce and Black Rain. So we're going to do a flip. And Skylark has more purple on, so Skylark is purple. Skylark, heads or tails? Heads. Heads. It is tails. Black rain. First or second? Second. All right. All right. No. No, you don't think they're black. Oh, well, I thought you were doing that in the cloak of girl, like they can apply to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, five, four, three, two, one, start. A poem to the blood on my hands. I've been told that murdering the English language is a crime against humanity. It might be more accurate that enforcement of standardized English is itself an offense against the people. We judge the yalls and acts and libraries as heinous aids. We dismiss the dialects of subcultures as ignorant and unprofessional, while claiming to be colorblind. We celebrate the liberated poets who cuss just the right amount, but scoff at the reader who done wrote this shit. <laughs> Education is a basic human right, we say, but fail to fund it equally in each zip code. We believe everyone can speak properly, punishing those who can't or don't fucking want our rules. The blood on my hands is from public grammar and spelling corrections that started in my life long before MySpace existed. The blood on my hands shouts from years as a college writing center tutor. I focus on constructing sentences instead of why anyone would want to. Or building confidence to raise their voices. No surprise that now they choose silence. The blood on my hands is for each side eye, rigid stare or sigh at people who dared speak their own dialect in my presence. For each time I chose patronizing platitudes to English language learners instead of actually listening to them. The blood on my hands might not have dripped from my knife. It may have come from the suicide blade of people I made feel small. 
whose lives are less important to us than perfect execution of English. caught up in the he say, she say, it's all controversy. God blesses the one who minds their own, Lord have mercy. We all fall victim of expressing our concerns, but sometimes intervention can be abrasive, friction and burn, which in turn, you get the conflict, hopefully, mostly over nonsense. Then misinterpretation leads to altercation. Sometimes your friends will turn foe. Family ties were severed, let go, and beware, they might be miserable. Some hold grudges to the bone and never leave it alone. So I tell them, stay out your feelings and catch this realness. Ah, it's hitting close to home. So I just maintain in my own lane and stay minding my own. Yes, I maintain with my own thing and stay minding my own. Now keep in mind, we all have similar issues. Some may be minor, some major, but some like to misuse, which is misguided nature. They take kindness for weakness, try to turn inches to miles, always needing, never helping, with that fake-ass smile. I'm talking about backstabbers, player haters, leeches, snakes, and rats. They spread dissension with cruel intentions. They stay on the attack. So I stay out of sight, out of mind, and mind in mind, I'll fall back in position with my loved ones and children. Keep it moving, slow motion, no time for stress, no commotion. Always trying to stay floating above the bullshit they keep promoting. The cautious who you're provoking, short fuses, explosion. This is the quiet ones that get more vicious than Logan. No time for the stress. Pressure can bust pipes in the chest, so I mind my own. Hi. minutes on the clock. as the greatest victim of the teacher abuse, a department heavily funded by the state of education. Loser teachers gather in dark dungeons, heated by torches burning with the flesh of failed students. The loser teachers surround a cauldron, hands locked. They moan and cackle and shout in tongues before the cauldron begins regurgitating critical comments for report cards and poorly written essays and jumbled mathematical equations. The loser teachers snatch the nasty words between their fanged teeth, forked tails whipping to the beat of John Bonham's rhythmic pulses. Snare Tom bass, snare Tom bass, snare Tom bass. 
all in hypnotic perfection. The loser teachers ascend a withered stairway and emerge from the refrigerator in the loser teacher lounge. They slither and hiss and kiss their copy of Das Kapital. With their socialist ideology affirmed, they enter the halls, yearning to torture the students with tests, followed by projects, followed by online assessments, followed by in-class quizzes, followed by participation points, followed by textbook readings, followed by competitive classmates, followed by gifted students, followed by a bunch of differentiation. Count. In five, four, three, two, one, go. Dogs are delicious. <laughs> Don't judge what I eat. They're loaded with protein from their cute heads to their feet. Animals were intended for us to eat. If they weren't, then why are they made of meat? Don't get all sappy. They were humanely raised. They were loved and cared for before being broiled and braised. It's tradition. We've done it for hundreds of years. So leave me alone with your pathetic tears. Oops, did I say dogs? Uh, cows, I meant. And somehow, you no longer offer lament. Meatless Mondays, for those of us who don't want animals to suffer every day. I mean, I care, but not on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, the weekend. One day a week, I can do something better. I won't pay for their suffering on Monday. I'm already hating the alarm clock, the official end of my weekend that brought me back to my 9 to 5. I guess I can eat a bean burrito today. Not tomorrow. It's asking too much. I can't be expected to care two days in a row. Well, hold on. While only causing suffering six days a week is certainly better than seven, when did our morals have breaks, optional days? If our boss exhibited sexist attitudes, would we encourage him to stop being sexist on Thursdays? Since we know not being sexist every day would be too sudden a change for him. Are we against family separation on the weekends? Do we shun racism every other Tuesday? Is pedophilia intolerable the first Sunday of the month? If we deem something wrong, how can it be wrong only some of the time? Is convenience a justification for our morals? Do we really only have the willpower for 14.3% follow-through? On our values? All right. <laughs> All right. Angry cow white. Gray. Purple. Three, two, one. <laughs> Five wow. for angry cow. All right. Eight years? What 
the difference does it make? This is liberty. You must protect liberty. Sign right here. It's only four years, $10,000, free health care for the rest of your life. See, super easy, not that hard. 18, 17, 19, doesn't matter. Go fight, go die. You may have lots of problems, that's super cool. Run to Uncle Sam, we'll make you the best sociopath you know. You are the one, you are one and the same. We will solve all your problems by making them all go away. Everyone is the same, everyone is the same, everyone is the same. Let Uncle Sam love you. Let him embrace you, let him mold you. Let him make you go first to fight for the right and to build the nation's plight and the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have killed fighting till the battles of drill. I guess that's bye, Dave. Go fight our war.
one, go. Riding on the bus with headphones on. I don't appear to be feminine, so people usually leave me alone. I've managed to go a very long time without being physically attacked. High school is the last time I can remember anything like that. Still, the reality of being perceived as feminine in public comes with risks. Risks I can seemingly mitigate by appearing less feminine. But I wouldn't call this presentation masculine. It gives power to the false idea that masculine presentation is a default setting. There's nothing inherently masculine about a hoodie and sweatpants. More women than men I know wear this stuff anyway. Men wear shorts or jeans or slacks. Women wear sweats and yoga pants. Unless you're me, then hopefully you're just invisible. Because I know this won't last. The only reason I haven't been attacked since my transition is because not enough time has passed. This illusion of masculinity doesn't really protect me. It only exists as a deterrent, something I do for peace of mind. One of these days, I'm going to be attacked. It's not going to matter what I look like or how I dress. I can dress in a way that makes me feel less likely to be targeted, but I will be targeted. Whether it's by a man who wants to assert his power over a woman, or from a bigot who thinks he knows my gender better than I do. It could be a sex crime, or a hate crime, maybe even both. I might survive the experience. Maybe I could die. Every time I step outside of my home, I am at risk. Even if all I'm doing is riding on the bus with headphones on. from wall to wall, trying to figure out what she was doing. She wasn't smiling. She was concentrating. I followed her eyes to the floor. Are you trying to outrun your shadow? Mm-hmm. Have you done it yet? Mm-mm. Maybe you should try to distract again. There are actually two. She pointed to another shadow to her left. Which do you think is faster? of people every first Friday. We do this thing in our gallery space, add a line of poetry. We set a theme for the month and ask people who pass, would you like to add a line to, your, to our group poem about insert theme here? We get our lines filled generally, but most people give us a look akin to deer in headlights. They stutter and say, I'm okay, or I'm good, or I'm not witty, or I'm not any good with words, or it won't be good, I'm not a poet. Words are magic. You can turn back time with a sentence and reality can change. You can unthink your thoughts. You can refold events unfolded. You can fantasia paint a dreamscape with buckets and mops. Who told these people they aren't poets? Who told them they can't create? Who told them to stop trying to outrun their shadow? We are all artists as children until someone tells us we are not. We are balls of energy, small sprints, bouncing between walls. At the end of the night, I asked the little girl, Did you outrun your shadow? Yes. <laughs> All right, so, Azra will be purple and Daria will be white. Azra's purple, Daria's white. Get those scores up in three, two, one, vote. We have three purple and two white. Thank you. Because I was too busy showing you my ass between the last round. <laughs> We're going to do, 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 do the raffle. We're going to do the first raffle. This is for $15. Does anybody else want to buy a ticket before we do this draw? Okay. All right, this isn't going to be good enough. Um, <laughs> I know that every. Okay. All right. For. 
person who has ticket 640129. You got a winner right here. Woo! Are you all excited? Are you having fun? Oh, I'm having oh, yeah. a fucking blast. Woo! Woo! All right. Uh, Skylark and Philip. Woo! So Skylark has three points, so Philip, you get to choose. Heads or tails? Tails. Tails. It is tails. You're not first or second? I'll go last. Okay, Skylark. Five. Ready? Five. Four. We know the good news. In each cell of our bodies, it has nothing to do with blood washing or obedience to a highly variable code. God has hidden God's self in the last place many would think to look, inside of us. Original sin lied to us, constructed a torturous narrative, and convinced most people to live fear into existence. But the mystics knew. The mystics recognized the face of God in each of us. They saw through the illusion that holy and human are separate, when in fact we never stopped being loved. The institution used words like heretic, false prophet, witch, and sinner to condemn those they could not control. But we are love, and we are not going to hell. We are the embodiments of the divine, each of us, whether we feel empowered or not sacrificed to the death. There is only the spirit who longs for each one to know our true intended nature. We're not going to hell. We may create a hell for each other, but we also have the power to know each other. The divine in me recognizes the divine in you. How absurd that this notion seems Eastern instead of native to everywhere. So no, sweetheart, you are not going to hell. You cannot lose God's love because it is not conditional, no matter what they said. Now go and be loved. Because love is who you are. Mm. In Pittsburgh, it's Cleveland. I see your three rivers, and I raise you a burning one. <laughs> I found your underwear under the couch six months after I kicked you out. Fuck you. In a different way than when they came off. <laughs>
you will either be the end. You can't stop the end. You have to make the choice. You will either choose one of us. As all of them pull apart, how to choose, how to pick. Both the green, the gold dragons looking to the white dragon's eyes. You're the one that will have to pick. You're the one that will choose. That will die with you. That will die alone. That will never die with you. The white dragon turns away to run. It is hard choice. Yet, there is no time to make up my mind. Enter the yellow light that shines from the front side of the dragon crystal, the wise crystal, the lightning crystal. It is your choice, and your choice alone. Make it wisely. Enter the red light that shines from the left side, right beside its brother, the fire crystal. Time will end. You will become two worlds. Your choice of how to live if you will die. The white dragon stops and looks up to the sky. Now is the time to fight, time to stay alive. Time to find myself while the green and gold dragons step to each other. The white dragon steps aside, holding his hand with his hands. Please make the choice. Please don't die for the wrong reason. Purple, Philip is again white. <laughs> the dragon, the white dragon. Alright, three, two, one, vote! Five for purple, thank you. speech from the roots through the trunk to the branch of each leaf. The emotions of overflowing possibilities swell the heart, constricting doubt, fortified by determination. I want to be the next generation. Where bullying is trampled by the hooves of security, indifferences make, shift, shape, form, prosperity. Disillusioned by charity, confirmation, human parity. I say worthy, for I'm trying to be the next generation. See, my words, they contest all obstacles, and my efforts break down barriers of impossible, building me this platform that I call 
practice because repetition breeds permanent. I say AI was earning it, so I need contemplation and preparation while I'm earning it, trying to be the next generation. Movers, shakers, givers, replacers, seizers of opportunity, everlasting foundation makers that cast seeds upon good soil, fruits of inspiration. I still want to be the next generation. The creation of a new hybrid language that extinguishes the flames of suicide, manifesting an embracing of individuality, sublime penetration. See a force that compels one to accede, succeed, reaching, ascending beyond limitation, simplification of complex matters. Teach one. Time.
One, go! She looked plain, neither attractive nor repulsive. Just, just plain. Her, this is much more plain than that. Her hair reached a tad beyond her chin, a regular chin without character. So normal, it was nearly. A sometimes forgot her own chin. Did she bump it with a fork when she ate? Did she forget to wipe it, which dealt with home topics like laundry? Though there was a TV guide that <laughs> broke into an ad about detergent. A beige, a beige couch faced a brown television, a color I didn't know was even an option for television. The rabbit ears only received channel 17 clearly, so we sat with some unaltered popcorn and watched a church lady talk about Deuteronomy. But most humans in general don't look like frogs. <laughs> I made my approach, but the church lady mentioned something about what Moses said to the Israelites while in the plains of Loam, and the girl turned back to the images of Channel 17. I did too. It seemed moderately interesting, about as interesting as the girl. At the conclusion of the evening, we shook hands, and I walked into the apartment building hallway, itself quite conventional. The elevator brought me back to the first floor. I passed... Okay. I again, Facebook Live. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one, start. start. Some, some people just aren't the type for marriage and family. I could thrash and reel to the sounds of my own internal monologue, but something in me insists that I keep moving forward, even if forward doesn't really seem to matter at all. I've found over the years that I have more in common with drug addicts than mental patients. Living in poverty, on disability, in the middle of a nearly dead city. The American dream for me isn't a dream. It's an impossibility. Even if these words were to reach the ears of millions, what would I truly gain? A moment of fame quickly burnt out? A life turned over to even harder drugs than the ones I'm on now? The pills I take just barely manage to slow my brain down enough for me to process the world. How quickly would all of that be lost if I were to trip and fall into being the next Nirvana? I think I finally understand why Fat Mike of NoFX once said that he felt his band had too many fans. That urge to only give about 60 or so percent. It's far too easy to burn out reaching for the American dream, trying to please and appease an audience that doesn't even exist. People are going to love you or hate you. There's no control in that. No matter how hard you work, someone who will never love you is never going to love you. That energy is better spent dancing to the music inside your own head. Living in poverty, on disability, in the middle of a nearly dead city, existing as one of a handful of fish in a puddle of a pond, trying to make art and poetry into a scene. Some people just aren't the type for marriage and family. I could thrash and reel to the sounds of my own internal monologue, trying to reach for an American dream that will never exist for me. There is no wife and kids, no house, no white picket fence, just a single bedroom apartment in a single cinder, cinder block tower next to the ruins of downtown. I have far too much in common with drug addicts and mental patients. My body wants to die, but my mind won't let me. Something from within insists that I keep on going forward, to round down these words which will only be spoken into the void, living in poverty, on disability, in the middle of in the middle of a nearly dead city, thrashing unreal to the song that's been stuck in my head for as long as I can remember, accepting that some people just aren't the type for marriage and family. It's better to die poor and free than live as a slave to your insanity. Purple, Greg is white. Three, two, one. Five purple. All right. I'm going to shut up two times in a row. Marlon. Yeah, Francesca isn't even here, so how's she? All right. Our final bout of round three will be the Angry Cow versus Azrael! Woo! Woo! Um, I'm pretty sure Azrael has fewer.
zero points. Yeah. So Azrael heads or tails? Uh, tails. It is heads. Keith, would you like to go first or second? Okay. All right, Azrael. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Hey guys, I know how you feel. When I see a gorgeous woman strutting, sashaying, bouncing, walking down the street, through the market, anywhere, all my instincts jump to my god, she's fine. Thank you, Aphrodite, for bestowing your beauty on this creature before me. Oh, I want to say, say it. Because while you may want to pay this gorgeous creature a compliment straight from the bottom of your cock, I mean heart, you never know how she might be feeling. You don't know if her smile is at you in general disposition, or a smile from the depths of depression, or just an appeasement to avoid another attack. Save it. It doesn't matter how amazing she looks or how up you are feeling, it is your job as a man to make sure she walks this world unharmed, and yes, your cat calls and wolf whistles can be the trigger for her PTSD. Save it. There is certainly no fault in admiring a beautiful woman walking by, but as you are taking in her visual delights, remember she is a person too. She has a brain behind that smile, a heart beneath those breasts, and the bridge to new life between her legs, if she chooses. She is not an object, a broodmare for the state, a prize you can win, or a conquest for your crew of little seamen to plant their flags. Save it. Because she is a person, plain and simple. She doesn't have energy to spare to shield herself from your veiled misogyny masquerading as appreciation for beauty. Save it. And save her from the similar threats of your cat-calling brethren when they have forgotten how to respect women. It's time to hold one another accountable for disrespectful actions. No one is asking for a holy war. Just a word to cool the smoldering embers of ingrained great culture. Every man is a threat, and the only way... That can change, is if we change it. Save it. Because one day you'll meet a woman you'll love more than air. A woman whose beauty the word beauty cannot compare. A woman who will drive you to distraction only to lead you to focus. And all those compliments you saved will choke them away from your throat. They'll shower your lover, eroding those years of pain from unwanted advances from less enlightened men. The liquid silk of her body will not be your possession, but each touch of her lips will ignite new passion, and each beautiful woman you see will charge a new battery. But you are the toy, and when her favorable eye bathes you with play, you will be glad for every time you save it. Where I'm supposed to go. But the echoes of screams fill my ears, and the stench of blood engulfs that way intentionally. Metal walls and an electric plod ensure my lack of alternatives. We are marched in a line, one after the next. Fear spreads around us. It's in our cries. It's on our breath. The humans around us, seemingly oblivious to our pain, force us to continue through the twists and the turns towards the terror that lies ahead. When I turn the next corner, the sight stops me in my tracks. Endless rows of bodies know my name. The metal cylinder pierces the head of the last one remaining in front. The last delay to what lies ahead in my final breath. But her body doesn't fall limp. She squirms. She fights. The life remains within her, but the cold metal hooks without even a hint of compassion. Race her defiant, rebellious body, uninterested in the pain so visibly on display in her glossy eyes. This vision haunts me more deeply than anything this horrifying day has yet produced. I wish I could tell you how her desperate struggle for life ends. But the cold metal cylinder approaches, and there is no one left in front of me. Got that purple, white. Votes in three, two, one, vote. We have, sorry, two white and three purple. Thank you. All right, 
So we're gonna do the next we're gonna do the next raffle. Um, does anybody else want to buy an additional ticket? Five dollars. You can win thirty-five dollars for just five dollars. <laughs> okay. All right. And then after this, we're gonna do a quick break. Uh, we have refreshments back there for donation. We have books for purchase. Go crazy. Give us money. <laughs> All right. Drum rolls out there. Tickets six four zero one four zero. Six four zero one four zero. Does anyone have that ticket? Yeah, I have that one. Damn. I have one. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? Six four zero one four zero. I'm a little bit
How'd you enjoy your break? Good? Good. 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 All right, so I'm going to call up the, uh, the top four, he says with suspicious quotation marks. With 10 points after the first three rounds, Angry Cow. Woo! <laughs> Ten points after the first two rounds, Gary Gwynn. Woo! Sorry, just disobeying me. <laughs> okay, whatever you do. Um, uh, with nine points after the first two rounds, Finn. Alright, 
Philip, I'm gonna need you to do this. Okay, when it says 20, knock on something. Okay. Um, and you do the 20. What is this, 10, right? Is it counting down? No, it's, uh, it's counting up. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Exploring the walls with their brushes are called muralists. Writers who cover their walls are called insane. Points, Finn gets to choose. Heads or tails? I know you hate it, don't you? Heads. Alright. Tails, Daria. First or second? Alright. Four minute round. You got it. Five, four, three, two, one, go! When you, when you say thank you for your, thank you for your service, what is the proper response? Is it, you're welcome? Is it, thank you? Or as my friend would say, my honor. Like, what do you really say? Because when you say thank you for your service, I have no idea what to say. 
Do you even know why you're thinking me? Is it because I served my country? Is it because you know I could have died? Is it because I have PTSD? Is it because you think I'm really unstable? I am really unstable. Is it because in any mass shooting I have a bigger target on my back? Is it because you thought I was brave? Is it because you think I have courage? Is it because you feel bad? Is it because you didn't care to serve? Is it because you didn't have the balls to serve? Or is it simply because someone told you this is the proper way to greet a soldier and we better make up for Vietnam? When you say thank you for your service, do you know what service is or what my service is, was? If you don't, then why are you thanking me? I tried to define it and I get stuck on the act of helping others. I mean, I've seen children die and families torn apart and everybody hates, hate, hates looking at me and all the bad guys are the good guys, but the good guys are the bad guys. I mean, I guess I'm just what I'm saying is, when you say thank you for your service, I really wish you wouldn't. I really wish you wouldn't. I really wish you wouldn't waste your breath. Because I don't want your pity or your self-absorbed meaningless words or anything else. I want you to stand up. I want you to speak out. And I want you to look at me in the face. And I want you to listen. And I want you to listen to me and the things that I have to say. When you say thank you for your service, do you know that freedom and liberty are not tangible things? I've tried to put my fingers on them. I've tried to hold them in my hands, and I've tried to pull them out of my brain. But see, you can't pull liberty out of a burning car. You can't jump in front of freedom to save it from a bullet. You can't feed your family with freedom and liberty. Is everyone else soothed by such propaganda? And then I look at myself in the mirror and I say, maybe I'm just too, you know, angry. Is it not terrifying to know that when I look at other children, other American children, all I see are future dead children? Because all I really want is for the children here to not have to carry the burden that I do. And I really want our only profitable, I really don't want our only profitable global export to be war. I don't want children to think it's just Call of Duty, because that's really scary. So, next time you want to thank me for my service, I want you to change the conversation. I want you to change the perspective. And I want you to sit down and listen, because I have a lot to say. white boy to a queer, transgender, agnostic, 30-something woman who shares socialist names on Facebook. <laughs> when were the seeds of the revolution planted in my head? Did it begin by changing the radio station? Leaving the parentally acceptable oldie station in favor of 90s alternative and grunge? Was it Rage Against the Machine? Was it Evil Empire and the Battle of Los Angeles? Was it watching the L.A. riots on TV and wondering just how bad things really have to be for an entire city to burst into flames over seven cops who got away with police brutality? Was it listening to N.W.A. and Body Count talk about shitty cops and the racial profiling and bigotry that black men face every single day? Was it all the, black, the backflips that park prosecutors were doing to prevent Mark Furman's words from going public? Was it watching Pedro Zamora on MTV? Did seeing the reality of a good and decent man dying of AIDS, a disease which was vilified in my Christian family's bubble as the wrath of God against gays, was that the straw that broke the camel's back? Was it the moment I realized that the Christians around me didn't actually love their neighbors? That these people sat in silent judgment every, of every single person around them, even their so-called allies? and that this was something I was slowly becoming myself? Was it when I first rejected the idea of toxic masculinity, long before I knew to use those words to describe the sickness of a false gender identity? Was it when my counselor said that it was no big deal that I felt more like a girl than a boy? 
that, that, that this was something I always thought about at one time or another. God knows that was a lie. Too bad it took 25 years to realize that. Was it going to a redneck high school surrounded by white supremacists? People so unashamed of their hatred that they, they draw pictures of Klansmen burning crosses in the open. The kind of people who wave rebel flags in Ohio talking about Southern pride. You live in Ohio, you fucking moron! You're in the fucking north! Why don't you just admit that you're a racist shit and be done with it? Was it the moment I realized that my church was manipulating me? That it was taking advantage of my traumas and abandonment issues? Feeding my need for family and trying to turn me into something that I despised? Was it the years and years of abuse disguised as tough love that made me reject God? Was it the words of Audre Lorde and Gil Scott Heron, Tupac Shakur and Malcolm X? Was it when I realized that white folk love to quote Martin Luther King but have no real clue what the man actually stood for politically? Was it when I realized that white Christians do the same thing with a white Jesus? Use the Bible to their advantage when it supports their points, you, <clears throat> while burying everything else that says that Jesus was a brown-skinned Jewish socialist? Did this all begin with no effects, bad religion, Kathleen Hanna and J Jella Brihafra? Did this begin with public enemy declaring 911 a joke? Or when I learned that my dad lives in a neighborhood where 911 calls don't get responses? Was it all just Fiona Apple at the MTV Music Awards, standing on that stage saying this world is bullshit? I'd like to say it was all those things and more, which is why I'm standing here before you now as a long since radicalized revolutionary, Brian Quinn. Venice purple, Dario's white. Three, two, one, go. Four white, one purple, Dario wins. Woo! Circumstances delivers a baby boy, the baby only longing for the comfort of his mother, the mother only longing to be near her new son. The baby feels himself pulled away further and further until he can no longer see her ever again. The mother, helplessly watching, bellows and bellows for days and days in search of a baby who will never return. The son stands in a dark crate, malnourished, alone. Soon his pale flesh will sit on a plate. His skin, no longer attached, will cover your hands when they get cold. The milk his mother produced to nourish him and help him grow sits in your cup. Vegans are weird, or so I've heard, through overblown infatuations with protein, talks of celestial powers bringing animals into existence for that very reason, man's arrogant claims of superiority. Don't be naive and ignorant, blinded by sentiment. Animals are to eat. They tell me. Well, let's include a simple computation as we examine this argument. 
start with 5,000, the number of mammal species, rounded down for simplicity. And now, mammals aren't alone, we need to add in birds. So 10,000 species with feathers plus 5,000 hairy bastards. Now, math class is just a shady memory of my distant past, but I think I can handle this one. 15,000. Oh, wait, we need to add reptiles. That's 9,000 species there. Shit, I've got to carry one. Uh, 24,000, I'm done. <laughs> Fucking fish! 27,000 of them. Seven and fours, 11 once more, two twos with that one. 54,000. My math teacher would be proud, if only I could remember her name. Amphibians, those weird motherfuckers who can't just pick a home. <sighs> 7,000 species still to add. Four and seven, carry the one. Damn, where's my calculator? Change the five to a six. 61,000. Insects? You've got to be kidding me. Do they even count? Two million? At least we get those zeros. That's 2,061,000 animals in the world. And you eat what? Four? Cow, pig, chicken, turkey? Okay, maybe you eat duck, crab, deer, walleye, carp, salmon, trout, tuna, lobster, shrimp, rabbit, lamb. I can still count that on my fingers and toes. Perhaps you tried turtle once, alligator or squid. I'll even add in an extra 10 for any I might have missed. Let's round that up to 30. Maybe, just maybe, you've eaten 30 species. 30 out of 2,061,000. I don't need long division to tell me that's not even close to 1%. Wait, you said I was silly. You went on and on about protein. You said God gave you animals to eat. You're slacking. So wash down your double cockroach horse burger with organic llama milk. Dip your blue jay wings in delightful gecko sauce. Serve your orca salad with shaved donkey on the top. Skunk jerky, kangaroo sliders, guinea pig and spider stew. Animals are for eating, you sentimental fool. Beagles, bats, and beavers, baked or barbecued. Falcons, fleas, flamingos, fresh or fondue. Camels, cats, canaries, and a creamy casserole. Go ahead, tantalize your taste buds. Crunch, munch, chomp, slurp, chug, gulp. Oh wait, or maybe not eating animals isn't that weird after all. Humans fucking suck, a cow haiku. Oh my god. I'll go without that one. Bye, that's All right. Black Rain. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Move on, Black Man. You've got to move on, Black Man. Pack your bags and go. Keep one thing in mind. You must return in time to shake your enemy's hand, to learn what then you didn't understand, to find all that was lost, to repay debts no matter the cost. You've got to move on, black man, to a new and unfound land where an aura as yours is in demand. Now, we've all got to try to move on, black man, with our hearts at ease and our minds enhanced, to battle deceit and animosity that comes with time and chance. That's why it's important for us to move on, black man, but keep our Lord first. Yeah, I know sometimes it's confusing, and sometimes it hurts, but we just keep getting caught up, obeying our thirst, while old boy was claiming that he's got it, he's got it bad. I got it worse, but I refuse to not let my light shine before I leave this earth. So when we do move on, black man, let's remember to walk with our shoulders back and our heads held high. Let's show them we're not ignorant brothers, so I can't deny is their only reply. Show them hatred doesn't flow through your veins. It's only respect and dignity that we're trying to regain. We're going to keep moving on, black man, but remember where home is. And let's be more than obligated in the duty which is really a blessing of having to raise our kids. Let's teach the tender little boys to be strong, yet sincere, to believe in himself, to overcome his fears. Show the precious little ladies to give honor to thee. Then there'll be symbols of compassion, displaying positivity. 
Remember to show the black woman that you can be everything good when it's perceived that we're irresponsible and don't do the things that we should. Hmm. Show her that you can be the definition of a man with her tears of sorrow you compromise and understand. Let her see that you can be romantic yet remain stern. All her needs, wants, and desires you're more than willing to learn. Show the woman in your life that you are her friend and her heart you will not break. Make her realize that in you she has a soulmate. Now, we're moving on, black man, so lay down that gun so no questions will be asked. Oh my God, what have I done? If it's violence in your eyes, sounds crazy, but blink, and it shall be gone. Take the hand of your brother, any color, and sing a peaceful song. Yes, we are going to keep moving on, black man. Put down that heroin, crack, and throw away that coke. Brighter days will surely come and show us all signs for hope. Now, seek help if help is what you need. You don't have to beg, just a simple please. And that really doesn't even mean getting down on your knees. Just stay focused on that man in the mirror. Then the beauty of life's purpose will become ultimately clear. See, it took me a while as a black man to understand that God is grand and for my life and your life, he has a plan. No weapon form shall prosper because we're in his hand. But it's up to us to make that stand. So if you're with me, come on. Move on, black man. Say that, but it's just it was it would be okay. too much. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. I said that. Yes, I remember that. I remember that. She was absolutely following directions, and I forgot to. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
All right. Um, Welcome back. I got worried. Yeah. <laughs> I knew, I knew. What time? <laughs> um, you know what? Angry Cow scored fewer last time, I think. No. No? You don't. You just don't want to call it. I don't want to call it. It's always tails. Okay. All right. No, it's always the opposite of what you say. It's always opposite of what I say. Pretty much. All right. All right. Angry cow. Heads tails. Uh, I guess I'll do heads. And, uh, <laughs> heads. <laughs> it is heads. Angry cow. All right. Okay. You go first if you want. Oh, I'd rather go second. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's not a strong preference. All right. This is where the third and fourth no. place. There is money involved. <laughs> Alright. Five, four, three, two, one, go! Please leave your message for Leslie after the beat. Beep. Hey there. Hello again. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's me, Finn. Or I guess you would know me as Starbuck. I know that kind of sounds like an Adele song. <laughs> So, right, you wouldn't know that song. Remember our, our guard duty talks? I always liked the name Finn. It's been a while, yeah. Um, how is it for you? I guess it doesn't really matter, though, does it? I, I don't really know what I should say to you. Oh, ha happy birthday. You would be 35, right? How amazing is that? I know you love birthdays. Girl, I know you <laughs> could drink more than anyone I ever knew. <laughs> it's like fucking impressive. I bought a cigar for it though. I, I, I figured we could smoke it, or I, I guess I could, in your honor, you know? I saw your daughter on Facebook. She was growing up so fast. Looks just like you with dimples of brown hair, and Will's doing great as a dad. He's taking her ice skating and mudding and riding horses and playing hockey and all that other stuff. She's a great student. I haven't heard much from Will though, but you know he's not with anyone else. He's pretty involved in her life, you know? I know you were wondering about me. Well, I'm doing fine. I'm doing as fine as I can. It's, it's a little hard. You know, I miss you. When November comes, I try not to think about it. But I have a girlfriend. She's great. And I'm going to counseling now for a couple years. Hopefully that straightens the little things out. Um, I find myself going to your Facebook a lot and uh, looking through your pictures. It's, it's really kind of sad. I guess it's just hard for me because I don't know how or sh I should feel about you. I mean, it's like I lost my friend, but I didn't lose a lover or a mother, right? And it's been seven years, so I should just fucking get over it by now, right? I mean, it's like you were there, and then I watched you, and then you were gone within a second, and it was like I watched your golden thread just be cut right in front of my eyes. And I know you didn't do it on purpose, but do you know that I had to pack up all of your things when you died? I had to go back to the clinics, I had to pack up everything, I had to make sure all your equipment was there, I had to make sure that everything was filled out, and God forbid, I had to fill out a form because you lost your rifle. It was fucking blown up. Right? I mean, like, what the fuck, people? I would like to talk to you about it, but, I mean, it seems just so childish. It seems so hard to talk about it. I mean, you wouldn't, maybe you shouldn't have left. Like, what the fuck? Why would you leave? Why would you even be so selfish? Or selfless? I don't even know. I was just tagging along, and then you were there, and then you were not. Like, how fucked up is that? I mean, I, I guess I had to pick up the pieces of your body. I had to pick up the pieces of your stuff. I had to pick up your life. Like, why would you even do that? Like, you're just fucking dead. You're just fucking dead. <clears throat> go, just go fuck yourself. I mean, I don't, I didn't mean that. It's just been a rough night. It's been a long night. I had a dream about you again in the fire in the metal, and I woke up smelling diesel and gunpowder, and sometimes, you know, I try to avoid diesel trucks because the smell of it reminds me a little too much of you and where you were over in the sandbox. Sandbox, <coughs> if we were kids. Well, I guess I was a kid. I miss you. I don't want to lose the only memory that I have of you in my dreams, but I'm sick and tired of watching you die over and over again. I didn't miss your funeral. I couldn't go. I was, I was in the hospital. I guess we both weren't where we needed to be. I wanted to see you when I got home, but I thought, why should I? It's not you, right? It's just a stone. I didn't mean to make your birthday message about this. I just don't have anyone else to talk about it. I mean, I've heard people around me, don't get me wrong, it's just hard to explain when I really miss you. And I really love you, and you were a great person, and you still are, and I'm just trying to take care of myself, like I promised. I guess I just want to finish 
with I'll see you in my dreams. Happy birthday, Scout. Say hi to everyone for me. Blood drips from my heart. 
We go in alive, 18 months of age, joined together in one piece. But that is not the way we come out. The shed is crowded, tails in my face. I shit where I stand. There is no other place. I can hardly move. I can barely lay down. Emotional pain and agony. I drown. stand alone. I don't usually dwell in the past, but I often reflect these conversations with my conscience, keep my inhibitions in check. Forgive me, for I know not what I do. Please forgive me for all the harm I might have brought on you. I didn't know better, but we swear we know it all. So please forgive me. Now, in the search for serenity, I found solitude. I like this one. I might be rough on the edges still, I'm a polished dude. Because patience and pressure makes the diamond perfected. Pleasure and pain parts the heart, please protect it. Now retribution and chaos is usually a wage for sin. The line between love and hate stretches so very thin. But I'm vindicated like Mike Jack. It's just my human nature. Only the creator and your reflection can liberate you. I ask for amnesty for my past, present, and future. See, I'm the rain. I help you grow. I'll never delude you. I have lived my life Yahweh, though I didn't create it. Forgiveness is just like mercy, man. It's all related. It's interwoven into the fabric of time, and it's all designed for the majestic plan. Though I'm just a man with faults and flaws, with broken laws, I was rebellious, almost lost, till I found my way back from the this through forgiveness. Forgiveness. Run away. 
<clears throat> now, I always try to stay in a heightened state of mind, especially when I'm fresh out the chamber. There's several clans of a dying breed, and we are the sole remainders. I hit hard like a pilot who followed my creed. I plant a seed for tomorrow. It should be instinctive to breed. But suffocating memories often visit my dreams. I wake up in cold sweat from never-ending screams. I tried to cover my ears, but my heart continued to listen. It was pumping pain through my arteries. Part of me was missing. Division of my mind, body, spirit, and soul, while I'm still delivering lethal blows on my foes along these desolate roads. And it left me to search for answers for my thesis, fit and puzzle and crumble in pieces. I wrote a lifelong letter. Hope you get a chance to read this. Now, picture black rain in the midst of the purple haze. I was young Frankie Beverly. I lived my life in a maze. Many attempts to escape, but who could I run to? This is my chosen fate. I look back at what I come through. Murder, mayhem, travesty, collateral casualties. There's always going to be trouble up ahead, but this is the path for me. These principalities, and I can't turn back. So I encrypted my strategy. I'm prepared for attack. Remember, there's different levels to the game and variables change. We're all mortal, flesh and blood. No one knows how much time we made. Till the selector come down, my time is borrowed. So I'm going to remain strong on my throne and cope with the sorrow. Now, I used to fall into the darkness till I learned how to fly. My mom, she cried so many tears as to scar her eye. Seem to be no rhyme or reason, purpose driven, I'm still breathing. If the good die young, I ask myself, then is death an achievement? I'm still grieving over my cousin Peanut, so many countless others. We only have moments to live, seconds to die, with some of this pain was smothered. When I was eight, I lost my best friend in a house fire. These little palms were still in bone just to get me higher. Don't judge me. I'm a real man. Lesbian about to scare off all the conservative snowflakes and the fake allies who are only here for their cookies. Because how dare I share an opinion about the people who oppress me? And just so you know, yes, straight people, you do, in fact, oppress me. So let me take this moment as you sit there in your seats to speak out for myself and for the others in my community who share these sentiments. The LGBTQ folk who are sick and tired of your complicit cis hetero bullshit sitting quietly by, observing our systemic oppression, and doing absolutely nothing to stop it. This isn't about marriage, or bathrooms, your religious liberties, or our basic human rights. This has always been about fear. And let me assure you, your fears are well-founded. We are, in fact, coming for you. That's right, the fags, the dykes, the queers, and the trannies, we're all coming for you, straight people. Oh, yes. We're coming for you. We're coming for your rights. We're coming for your privilege. We're coming for your ability to feel safe as yourselves, free from harm and harassment. We're coming for your appropriation of our culture. Your queer eyes for the straight guys, your gay best friends, the term metrosexual, and your repurposing of drag culture as a spectator sport featuring RuPaul. We're coming for your fetishes, we're coming for your kinks. We're coming for your unicorns and your so-called lesbian porn. We're coming for your objectification and exploitation of trans women. We're coming for your trans trap, he, she, tranny, and she male. We're coming for the narratives that all trans women are sex workers or that transgender people are inherently deceptive because we don't immediately out ourselves to everyone. We're coming for your ability to label our genders as mental illnesses, as well as your ability to white off our genders because of our mental illnesses. We're coming for your gatekeeping. We're coming for your stereotypes. We're coming for your assumptions about our private sex lives. We're coming for your rude questions about our transitions 
and your ceaseless need to know whether or not we've had the surgery. We're coming for your gay bashing, we're coming for your bullying, we're coming for your pray away the gay sermons and your barbaric religious torture camps you call conversion therapy services. We're coming for all the parents who disown their kids because God hates fags and I ain't raised no queers. We're coming for your Prop 8s and your HP2s. We're coming for your attempts to make our basic human rights a state issue. We're coming for the hypocritical senators who vote for these bathroom bills, then get caught soliciting sex in bathrooms themselves. We're coming for the raping evangelists that pay for sex with gay hookers, then cry about their sins on television, begging for forgiveness after they get caught. We're coming for the culture that forces us into a closet, we're coming for the rape jokes, the gay jokes, the I can make or straight jokes. We're coming for the people who ask, why isn't there a straight white pride parade? And which one of you is the man in the relationship? Hmm. We're coming for your claims that it's just my opinion. As if your opinion had any bearing on my basic human rights. My sexuality is not subject to your opinion. My gender is not subject to your opinion. And you know damn well that my basic human rights are not subject to your opinion. You may not be aware of this, but I don't get to just be myself without consequence. What I do is considered brave in your world. We're not welcome in your cis-hetero suburban utopias without a disguise. We're not welcome into your Christian houses of worship unless we lie. Some of us can't even walk out on the street without the fear of physical violence simply because we don't look enough like a woman for the general public's liking. We can't use the bathroom without someone looking up our dresses. We can't even hold our lover's hand in public without fear or second guessing. We live in fear every single day that today might be our last because a cis had decided that his right to discriminate trump my right to life. This was never about marriage or bathrooms religious liberties, or our basic human rights. This has always been about fear. And I'm sick and tired of having to be afraid of you. All right. Well, let's get all the uh, competitors up here. All, all, all other six of you, come on. So, I want to make a quick announcement before we, no, before we let the judges vote and we, we award the winner. So, there was a special idea that I posted uh, like, right before the 19th was supposed to happen, and we had that snowstorm, so I didn't get the chance to tell anybody. But, there are plans in the works for a another division of the sword fight. Um, I don't want to go into all the details, but it will be open to anyone all over the world, because it is a video-only sword fight. Mm -hmm. So, the same... Format for sword fight applies. It's just the people entering are just doing videos. Um, we'll work out all of the compensation. But so so if you are interested in sword fight, but you live in Suriname, you can be like, hey, I want to be in the sword. Fight. So that is an option. So woo woo woo. Um, let's see. So let's award our fourth place winner with not the photographer. No. <laughs> <laughs> Our fourth place winner, Finn. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was $25, by the way. Our third place winner, $50, Angry Cow. <laughs> Yeah. 
Three, two, one, boom. Three purple, four purples, and one white. The winner and first ever sword fight champion in his debut. Woo! expression is uh, very key and um, I, I'm just I'm honored I'm honored to uh, to have people willing to listen to what I got to say and thank you Seven months has been a pretty big adventure for all of us. It, uh, I like to think that this uh, has been a success. Yeah. And Definitely. you know, best man won. But I also accomplished my goal of raising the bar. And Definitely. now it's going to be your job mm -hmm. to carry that bar. So, congratulations. Patreon.com slash writing nights. 